What's up, StarCraft fans? Last time we did Artanis uh, at level 1. This time we're going to do how to play Rory Swan at level 1. So, uh, we will go in Dead of Night this time, the map where we have to defend against Infested. So, yeah, let's go ahead and thank Legendary Center, who is supporting me in the Mobile Zage Wave tier, and Darth and Shadow Archon, who are supporting me in the Pulse Cannon tier, and all my amazing, wonderful, incredible supporters of Patreon. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to use the Maguro map, and uh, I'll explain the objective once the game starts. Oh, there it is. So, uh, the lessons I taught you, uh, for the first one as Rainer, the first lesson I taught you is to continue making stuff, and that still is true today. The second lesson I taught you with Kerrigan is to... Uh, uh, maximize your hero, maximize your hero, because your hero is really what will carry you. That is not going to be very applicable today, because Swan does not have a hero. The third lesson I taught you, as Artanis, is to pick and choose your fights, uh, and continue wrapping up. That is very much the, that is very much, uh, the lesson today. You need to pick and choose your fights, because if you just... Uh, keep attacking, you will get, your base will get overrun because Dead of Night is the map where we have to destroy 151 enemy structures uh, throughout the game. And uh, what's unique about this map, first of all, is that you are stuck on one base. So the builds that uh, the builds that will apply for two player maps will not apply for this map, which is why I'm not really explaining uh, the build that I'm doing. I'm, it's going to be more like the general strategy. So. Uh, the thing is, if you're if you're starting off a swan, I would rather not give you a specific build to go for, but rather the general idea of what you want to make. Uh, what you want to make in general here are siege tanks for defense, uh, and uh, goliaths to round out your damage output. Uh, that being said, uh, we will still use siege tanks for offense, but that is for later. For now. We're gonna be worried about defense, which is why I build an engineering bay. You don't necessarily have to do that in your in your games, but I'm soloing and I'm level one, so I kinda of have to. But if you have an ally, you don't need to you don't need to you, don't, you definitely don't need the engineering bay uh this early. Uh what you do need though is yeah, the lessons from level one. Continue continue making stuff, continuously make stuff. And the lesson from uh from Artan is it, to, to pick and choose your fights. The lesson for Swan is, uh, well, there are a few lessons you can take for Swan. The first one is that uh, static defense is really good against invested, especially defending. Uh, I built a blaster billy at my ally's base just to help him defend, but like, uh, it's not, it's, it'll, it'll come in handy later. So yeah, you can see I'm starting off with a siege tank. So one of the things that uh, you can take in this video, uh, or the build at least, build-wise, one of the things you can take in this video is that siege tanks are awesome. They help anchor your force, uh, especially early on, because goliaths, if you start out with goliaths, you'll find that it's pretty difficult to ramp up in power. Because the goliaths are... Uh, they, their power curve is a steady is a steady upward graph until it can start reaching critical mass where it starts sloping upwards with siege tanks the power curve is uh, a higher a higher angle so with the higher angle of the power curve you will be able to get a, a more stable force to anchor the rest of your goliaths when they uh, when they hit the field so that's why I'm starting out with siege tanks. You you can also use this when uh, when you're playing a different map or on the solo queue as level one swan, but you do want to start out with siege tanks. You can see I am uh, continuously making. Yeah, you can see that I will be temporarily play blocked here, but uh, I did make the depot in time, and I'm making the armory so that I can upgrade the laser drill. So the unique thing about Swan is that he has this big laser drill. It is not that impactful at level 1, or at least not visibly impactful, but it is going to get a lot of kills because you're fighting against the best. But that, that's beside the point. It will get a lot of kills. 
See, I'm starting out this uh, this deep over here. So I won't get to play block. Yeah, just continue making stuff. The same lessons you learn, the lessons you learn from level or from 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 the raider video, are very much applicable still today. Just continue making stuff, uh, and you will eventually get to a point where the enemies can no longer touch you. You see, the the they are trying to move in, they're trying to walk, but they're not getting much luck because the uh, they have four siege tanks. They can't they can't get past four siege tanks. There's hunterling here. But you can see it is within range of my siege tanks. That's another thing I guess you can take from this. You can, you, you can position your tanks in a way that they can uh, defend multiple areas at once. By, yeah, just by smart positioning. You can see this tank is able to shoot at these infested here. But is also able to shoot at the hunterling at my allies bases. So if you position your tanks around here, around this area. Around this area, actually, around this, around this area, you'll be able to shoot. You, you'll be able to protect your allies' middle line, as well as uh, the front. The reason why I didn't put it here is because sometimes the enemy just uh, hugs this side of the map. You can also see, you can see why I also built a depot right here. Sometimes the, the enemy just hugs this side of the map and goes straight for your own middle line, which is why I put the tank here instead of here. So. Yeah, I'm making these depots. They will be the foundation of my defense later on. Uh, on this map, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna push out the offense with these siege. I'll explain well, what I'm building these depots. Well, what I'm why I'm building those depots there. But uh, yeah, you can't take that. That is uh, this is pretty nifty. But if you're unaware, on Dead of Night, there are four entrances to your base. The first entrance does not have rocks. And it will get attacked as early as night one. But it's a relatively weak attack at night one. And it will progressively get stronger the more nights you get into. The second entrance will have these rocks over here. And uh, we will see them in action later. But you can see I am moving out of my siege tanks. I do have these SCVs out for repair. That's another thing you want to have. A, that's another thing you ought to learn as Swan. Repair is good. You want to keep your siege tanks alive. Uh, also, you can see that, again, the same thing I taught you for level 1 Rainer. Like, whenever you have a cooldown, just use it. You can see I'm using this uh, this concentrated beam. The concentrated beam fires a big laser that deals about 200 or so damage in a single... I think it's 300 or so? but It, it, it does a lot of damage. In a straight line from the laser drill itself, up to 500 range, and 500 range is effectively the entire map. You can cross the entire map with 500 range. So, yeah, effectively you can shoot 500 range of a straight line and it'll damage anything. That enemy owns its way. You can see this singular uh, uh, concentrated beam damaged about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 buildings. It damaged 8 buildings, and that's level 1. So that's why uh, that's why I just chose to fire it, it, it. It's free damage. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it, right? The coordinates for more As you can see, I'm still pushing out my siege tank force, and you can see that I did build a Hercules. You can see, that, yeah, this Hercules is flying right here. I built it earlier on, but uh, the reason why I'm confident pushing out my siege tanks is because I have this Hercules. To send them back to base when uh, when they need to. Now it's not necessarily applicable for uh, uh, it's not necessarily applicable for every map to run back on defense, but you do want the Hercules, so you can see it teleported right back to safety when it's in danger. So uh, for other maps, this Hercules will still be very much applicable, very much be useful, uh, even if you're not running back to defend your base. Uh, because you can just teleport behind the safety of your Goliath, Goliath army, or just teleport out of the fight in general. Uh, so how you control how you control this Hercules is you will need a control group. I have this control group set up, and it contains one Hercules and eight siege tanks. So what the uh, what the Hercules does it, is it will carry the siege. It's it's effectively your quote unquote hero unit. If you if you want to apply the lessons from Kerrigan here, uh, 
then you can consider your Hercules with 8 siege tanks as your hero unit. And you want to use it aggressively whenever you're pushing out during the day. But as you can see, I am adding more and more siege tanks. These siege tanks will actually uh, be... Okay, so I use the Constrain Beam again. I, yeah. I think I use it here. Let me see how many buildings. I have 129 at the start. 125. So I killed 4 buildings with this concentrated beam. Which is good. That's 4 fewer buildings you have to worry about. And again, it just goes back on cooldown. It's not energy based. I don't lose anything by using the concentrated beam. Uh, because I have siege tanks. They can hold the line pretty effectively. Don't get too bold out there. I just used it. So now you can see I've transitioned, transitioned to Goliath production. Because I will want that steady force. And of course the anti-air that comes with Goliaths. It's like uh, it's like your infantry support for the siege tank. The siege tanks are the main uh, are the main pushing force. They deal uh, a good amount of uh, burst damage, but once the burst damage has been dealt, you will want something behind it. You want you will want some uh, some meat behind it to kill off stragglers and low health units. And that's what the Goliaths are for. You can see I'm just uh, uh, loading my siege tanks. I teleport right here. The nice thing about uh, the nice thing about the Hercules is that you can teleport right to the, right to the front, and when the day ends, you can teleport right to the back. You can see I'm still building these these structures. Still walking away at these buildings. Yeah, I'm just trying to clear as many buildings as possible. Concentrated beam. Concentrated beam is available once again. I will just use it here because why not? See, it did, yeah, it did deal tremendous damage. It killed off a swarm host. Two swarm hosts actually overseer, mutilisk, aberration. Yeah, it's just good to use the concentrated This is my third concentrated beam, concentrated beam use, by the way. It's pretty good. So, a lot of people will just kind of save your concentrated beam. Uh, but it's really a bad idea to just to save something like that. Just, you just use it. So how I micro my Hercules uh, is that I just press this control group and uh, I load the siege tanks. So yeah, so the siege tanks and the Hercules are both in the control group. How you use it is if you want to load your siege tanks, select the control group to recall the entire force and then right click on the Hercules. Well, if you right click on the Hercules, the Hercules will automatically load all of the siege tanks. And how you unload is yeah you uh you uh press the unload button you hit the unload hotkey and then left click on the hercules that will tell the hercules to unload whatever it has wherever it is so if it's standing over here it will just unload the siege tanks as it is moving toward the place where you like where you right clicked it to So yeah, you can see the Goliaths are behind. You can see the yeah the siege tanks are dealing the uh, uh, the burst damage to enemy forces, and the Goliaths are behind, protected. the The nice thing about having your Hercules with siege tanks force in front is that they can burst down uh, these forces and splash them down even, while your uh, your Goliaths are relatively protected. They're relatively safe behind uh, behind uh, your siege tank line see I did unfortunately get splashed on by that bailing but I do have these uh, designs the so you can already see the competition you want to go for as level 1 swan you want siege tanks for your burst damage and the Hercules to carry them around so this is basically your hero unit as I mentioned earlier your your, uh, your infantry will be the Goliaths uh, because they can shoot down and up and their uh, their hit scan damage is pretty good at picking off the remnants, uh, or the survivors of what the siege tanks have been chilling at, and the science vessels are going to be your designated heroes. They will provide value uh, continuously, as long as you don't lose them. You see, I am still producing, yeah, these depots are still very much useful. So, uh, I'll, I guess I'll explain later, and, and I probably don't, don't even need to explain, but like, uh, these depots are very much intentionally placed there. For a reason, you can see the 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 beauty of having the this Hercules is that I can still push out with my siege tanks close into the night, where where my guys are walking back to base, 
Because I can just teleport back to the base with my Hercules. And, uh, uh, get, the, get all my siege tank to safety. So my Goliaths have been able to retreat safely because before night time, I already, I already ran them back. Uh, I tried a risky play here by making these depots. Sometimes hybrids spawn here. I just try to build them far away enough that they won't get attacked. But unfortunately, I miss, I misplaced them. This depot is a little too far. It'll get, uh, it'll get attacked by the hybrid. So you can, you can immediately see uh, why I chose to build my depots here. I recessed my defense. So instead of attacking, instead of defending three ramps all at once. I only have to defend one front with my entire siege tank force. And of course, the rest of the siege tanks will defend the front. So, uh, th yeah, these these uh, depots are effectively uh, serving as a wall to protect my uh, to protect my forces behind them. You can see... Uh, oh, by the way, I wasn't going to explain. The second night, the forces, Amos forces will start attacking this rear entrance. And starting the third night, they will uh, come from all four sides. So that's that's the reason why I, I chose to uh, recess my defense here. If I chose to defend each choke point, it's true that fewer fewer enemy forces will be able to walk in at a time, but it also will be spread too thin. I don't want to be spread too thin defending uh, defending uh, all on my own. So I chose instead to recess my defense to make a, a, a singular front here so that my siege tanks can help each other out. They can fight at a, at a unified front to increase their chances of uh, just being more effective overall. Oh, I used another concentrate. Oh, I wonder where I used it. I used it somewhere. Okay, I used it here. It killed a bunch of mutalisks. It killed something here. Oh, no, 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 it just damaged a bunch of these buildings, which I guess was is good. Oh, it killed it killed an overlord that was probably transporting forces. That's good. That's good. Okay, so I only have a single mulus to contend with, and I already have a turret in place to fight it. So yeah, um, I'm soloing as the hero's level one swan. So I'm building uh, defenses in uh, in spots, and yeah, I have these tactical building placements. But uh, if you are playing as level one swan, you probably will have an ally. So I don't have to worry about these placements as much. And uh, if you're a beginner at Swan, the thing you have to worry about the most is constant unit production and your control groups. Again, one control group will contain your siege tanks and your Hercules. Another control group will contain your Goliath and science vessels. You can see my, my Goliath force has grown to a sizable amount because I have been constantly producing them. You can see I'm uh, I'm applying the lesson from uh, from the Artanis video, uh, picking and choosing my fights. I'm not just charging down the ramp because that's a good way to lose your entire army. I'm uh, I'm baiting the enemy. I'm, I'm I'm slowly inching myself in so that the. Uh, uh, the enemies will kind of walk into me, and they'll get shot down, and they'll, they'll, they'll thin themselves out uh, to the degree that uh, they'll, they'll, eventually, they'll eventually be thin enough that I can just push in like this. So I have been whittling, whittling down this side earlier, and now attacking the other side, which is why my siege tanks can just drop in freely. And continue the push. So you can see I have cleared out this entire section of the map, the entire uh, southern section of the map. I'm pushing north. Okay, so the time is once again running out, which means it is time for this Goliath, these Goliaths to go home. So you, you can see, uh, while my siege tanks are providing cover fire, the Goliaths are going home. So uh, again, the, the lesser level 3. Pick and choose your fights. Uh, the siege tanks can't hold the line for a time, but that's that, that, that time is what you need to get your Goliaths back home. And get them to be more effective. You can see it at teleport to see the, the Hercules back. And again, get my siege tanks in good defensible positions. And yeah, drop those siege tanks there. Just yeah, you can see continuous army production. I'm at, I'm at 172 supply, which is not very high for a 26 minute game. But 
Uh, considering I'm level 1 and I'm continuously fighting, not bad. Not, not a bad place to be. Yeah, I'm still getting these siege tanks. Yeah, for defense, if you're a defense, important thing, the important thing is to uh, keep, uh, keep producing stuff. Keep adding siege tanks to your defensive line, especially against these tanks. You will want to focus fire them even. You can see I use a science vessel. You don't need to use this, but you can absolutely use science vessels to irradiate, uh, to irradiate enemy defenses to uh, uh, just deal constant damage. You can see the science vessel already has five kills because I have been using them offensively. This this science vessel has 19 kills. 19 kills. That's pretty effective. You can see I used uh, another concentrated beam to whittle down those enemy forces. They're coming in. They get, they're getting shot down. Another stank over here. I raided, I raided the stank as well as uh, the center of the enemy forces. So you can see that again, SCV is repairing. Uh, once you see your forces getting, uh, once you see your defensive line getting uh, uh, whittled away at by the enemy, you gotta send your workers to repair. That's the advantages of Tehran. You can send your workers to repair. I know it's a lot to manage, and uh, if you're prioritizing things, if you're not quite fast enough to uh, send your workers yet, uh, it's still more important to focus on production, I would say. It's still more important to focus on production, but if you have the bandwidth, send some workers to repair. Get to work, Let's continue. We have to burn so we're now pushing the north side, the north uh, northwest. This will allow my forces to... Uh, Concentrate less on my ally side of the map. So yeah, I, can, I place the siege tanks here. You can see, uh, you can see this positioning I have over here uh, for a moment. The Hercules is providing high ground vision while the tank is shelling away with the cliff as protection. See my Goliath pushing in. I have reached critical mass of my Goliath. I can just kind of push in and not suffer too many losses. You can see I'm nearly maxed out. And just uh, marching in with my Goliaths. Siege tanks still providing amazing cover fire. By the way, the size vessel already has 24 kills. The size vessel has 24 incredible kills. And yeah, I just dropped these tanks to deal the burst damage. And they'll just clean up very nicely. You move in, yeah. You, you, you still, you still, you can see I'm still producing stuff. I'm still producing defense because I'm soloing. Um, I'm, I'm still producing static defense because I'm soloing. But if you have an ally, uh, you can kind of stop the production of static defense. You can just concentrate on uh, replenishing your army. Make sure you're always at max supply. Yeah, just yeah. The lessons learned from Rainer. Keep building stuff. The lessons learned from Ratanis are kind of uh, less applicable at this point because you have reached critical mass, you are 200 supply. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see I picked I pick and choose my fight. That was, not the, uh, that was not the time where I can use, I, where I can absolutely use the lesson from Atanis where I just, uh, yeah, let my Goliath retreat while my siege tanks are uh, uh, doing the thing. So yeah, uh, the lesson from Swan, I would say is... Uh, Sometimes it's just hard. I need to be very technical. But if you're playing with an ally, the lesson from Swan is control groups. It's uh, it's a pretty underrated part of learning StarCraft. Well, not really. It's not really, it's not really underrated in the in learning StarCraft, but it is underrated in the uh, in the aspect of watching StarCraft. If you're watching this video, you see I have siege tanks. Uh, you see I have stuff rotating, it looked like I'm really fast, that I can uh, click, 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 really fast. But really all I'm doing is recalling my control groups. I have a control group of, I have a control group of, uh, uh, of uh, Hercules with siege tanks, I have another control group with the rest of my army. And that's really all I'm using. That's really all I'm using. Okay now, okay, now that I've uh, cleaned that up, it's time to push out basics. You can see 
Night Five did. Night Five did put a huge dent in my forces, which is why I'm kind of I kind of consider myself on a timer now. I'm kind of pushing with my uh, with my entire Goliath force. I use that uh, cause me to whittle down their defenses. Yeah, I'm pushing out more aggressive. I am also starting to mine out, so uh, it's dangerous times right now. I'm mining out, and I'm still not at max supply, or not, or not anymore at max supply. So I am on a timer. I need to finish this off. Good thing is that I do have enough. And yeah, that's the beauty of control groups. I have a Goliath force. I have uh, siege tanks, and Hercules, and yeah, the the science vessels for healing. And that's, uh, yeah, that's the lesson you need to learn first one, control groups. This would not be manageable. You would not be able to control a Hercules with siege tanks if you don't have control groups. You need control groups to have that hero you did. And again, if you want to unload your siege tanks, uh, click the hotkey. Click the hotkey for unload. This thing, click the hotkey for unload. And then left click on the, uh, on the Hercules itself so that it will drop your siege tanks wherever it is. And then when you need to load again, Select your control group with all your forces, and then right-click them to the siege tank. That's that's probably what you need to practice uh, for Swan. Uh, control groups and uh, transport micro. That's what you need. Uh, assuming, of course, you've kind of uh, gotten the basics down of continuously producing stuff, because all of this is possible because I was continuously producing stuff. So there's one building left, I'm just trying to get the bonus because at this point in the game, we're 41 minutes, so we might as well get the bonus. We might as well. And again, the beauty of the Hercules, you can just teleport here and end the game. And that is how you do it. Again, control groups and Hercules micro are the lesson for this, uh, for this uh, uh, video. The one that's applicable for all commanders is... Uh, control groups, control groups, control groups, control groups. That allowed me to uh, micro two different sets of units at all at once. The general attack moving force is just the Goliaths with the science vessels, whereas the uh, the hero unit will be the Hercules and the siege tanks. And uh, yeah, that's that's that. You can see that uh, power spike wise. Oh, 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 right. uh, power spike wise, I got my power quit pretty quickly because I made my siege tanks early. And uh, once I have my siege tanks, I just round out my force with Goliath to clean out stragglers and take care of the air forces. Now I won't make I won't make any uh, excuses for Swan. He is definitely more involved to play if you want to play well. Um, some people have been telling me, I think the Sticks Bender has been telling me that's, uh, that Wraiths are Swan's best unit, but honestly, if you're a beginner as Swan, don't burden yourself with Wraith Micro. It is better to produce units. It's better to macro is more important than micro. If you're learning Swan, macro is more important than micro. You need the more important thing is that you're producing units. Uh, and then once you have those units produced, you will be able to uh, focus on mac uh, on micro. So, um, if you are new, if you're coming for the campaign or the arcade, and you want to try out Swan, uh, and you're level one, I recommend. Playing on normal difficulty, because uh, or even casual. Ca there is no shame in playing casual, guys. Uh, if you are at that difficulty, uh, do not let anyone shame you into playing a higher difficulty until you're comfortable playing a higher difficulty. Because Swan is more involved in playing. If you know what to do, if you know what to do, uh, Swan is manageable, but uh, he's very, uh, he's definitely very, you know what to do, heavy. You know you need to know what to do for Swan. If you're level one, uh, maybe you can play a normal difficulty. Uh, the combat drop is a pretty good power spike for Swan. It gives him a steady top bar and the force you can just attack move along with your Goliaths for a time. Level three, good, good if you're playing defensive maps. Like, if you're playing a defensive map, level three is a very uh, good power spike. Level 5, I would say, is an iconic power spike because, uh, yeah, Swan players are known for gas harvesting drones, but in terms of impact, yeah, it is impactful, but not a huge deal. It's a good, it's a good deal, like, 
yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nice, but it's not a huge deal to get the gas runes. Thor, uh, once you get the Thors, I do find that Thors are fun to play, but I would rather wait for level 12. The immortality protocol is really what makes Thors usable, because uh, Thors are expensive, and if you need to rebuild them, uh, you'd rather you know have the quicker rebuild and just take gas. This is probably what will allow you to play in higher difficulties. The, uh, the advanced construction, the advanced construction for SEVs is, I would say, the huge upgrade for Swan. Once you get level 8, you will be able to build stuff faster because you can get 4 workers to build your factory, starport, armory, etc. So that uh, uh, you'll be able to ramp up faster as Swan. And also, the, uh, the repair for Swan will be free at this point. So, like, if you're playing as Swan at this point, it's not actually a bad idea to just keep making SCVs and have the extra SCVs follow the army for free repair. They're basically your medics that only cost minerals. So, you know, uh, why not make them? Because, uh, yeah, repair is absolutely free. It's just 50, 50 minerals. If you're making mass stores, you can have a bunch of SCVs following them because repairing the Thors is free and uh, they cost a lot of gas. So for the middles, you just want to dump it at SEVs. Uh, tech reactors, also a good a good power spike. Not as huge as improved SEVs, but pretty good. Uh, immortality protocol, this is what unlocks the ability to uh, make mass doors. Once you have the immortality protocol, you can even unlock the ability to mass doors and actually push into the map using just the doors. Starport, yeah, pretty nice. If you are a, uh, a micro fan, you want to make rates. If you really like micro, you want to make rates because rates function by uh, trying to get a moving shot. Because how rates work is that they deal more damage. Uh, they deal uh, rates deal more damage when they're on the move. So you want to uh, micro rates by right click on the ground, right click on the ground, and then when they are close to an enemy unit, uh, attack move. On the ground and they will target that unit uh, and then right click again so that they'll resume moving it's pretty involved but like i said if you're into micro race are your unit uh this one improves your combat drop pretty good upgrade it's pretty good and uh, this one will make your uh will make your macro a lot faster because yeah it it, 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 it oh wait not really it, it just makes your use more survivable Basically increases the health by 20%. And that's uh yeah, that's the first one. The big power spikes are I guess level two. If you're playing defensive maps, level three, level eight. I would say level eight is the biggest power spike for Swan. Followed by level ten. And two. Two and ten. Yeah. Four is also a big power spike. I I, I apologize, but four is also a big power spike because it lost a pulse cannon. Which is basically a nuke. And it's really good. Okay, let me revise that. Biggest power spike is 8. And then I would say 4. And then 10. And then 2. Those are the power spikes. And then 5. That's Those are what I would say the biggest power spikes. So if you want to go up in difficulty, if you're playing a normal, you might want to amp it up to hard once you reach level 8. If you're playing on the hard... Uh, you want to switch it up to Brutal when you hit level 8. And then uh, once you hit level 15, that's when you want to try the higher levels. And that's it. I'll see you guys for the Gara next time. See ya.